us things that we cannot do ourselves as well. Empower us, Lord, and let us feel the overwhelming love and grace and security of belonging uh, to you, Jesus. We love you. It's in your name we pray. Amen and amen. So I know y'all know this, and we're going to do this. I requested if we could do this song again, and so thank you for doing it. this week so of course tonight we have youth and uh, anybody that's out there we want certainly to send the youth that direction Tuesday uh, afternoon or uh, right after lunch at 1 we have the Philippians study Wednesday quite a few activities going on so we've got brown bags from noon to 1 that's a zoom study but some folks also come to the coffee bar we've got a Lent study at 6 and we're providing a light supper and that light supper this week is just going to be roast burritos made by Pam Ryan. And it's going to start March 19th, so that's a few weeks from now, so you can sort of start getting going on that. Uh, this Thursday night, our Building and Grounds Committee, uh, which we used to call trustees, but now we've transitioned to a kind of a different term, Buildings and Grounds Committee will meet Thursday at 7 in the coffee bar. And tomorrow, one of the things that our pastor is doing during Lent is he's going to have a day where he's going to fast from his phone. And so <laughs> what we, we want to give him a break. And so if any issues come up tomorrow, I put my phone number up here. You can call me. Also, of course, I'm in the directory, and I'll have my phone ready at all times tomorrow if anybody, if anything comes up and you need us for anything. And, of course, Glenna uh, can be reached in the office. Then we're going to tag team, and we're going to take care of anything and so that Todd can have a nice little break, we hope. Mm -hmm. uh, our mission um, team this year decided that we're going to have a focus for every two months. 
hope have some of those folks to come in and talk to us about a little something and have a big push there. But just wanted you to know ahead of time, that is our focus for these two months. Our women's group is sponsoring a little outing next Saturday. And it is to Ragtown Gospel. They are going to uh, be leaving at 1.30 or the thing starts at 1.30. Leaving at 1.30. So if you are interested in it, would you? To your hearts in the process and dear Heavenly Father we just give you our service we lift up our pastor to you and the words he will bring to us we thank you for the music we've already had and we pray that you all of the words especially the lyrics but also even those music notes will just go to our hearts and prepare us for the message you want us to receive this morning we thank you for being our God and for being here with us this morning in your name we pray. Amen. Please stand and join me in our hymn of praise as we worship our Lord and King. Page 277, Tell Me the Stories of Jesus, all three verses.
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Please turn to page 298. When I surveyed the wondrous cross, our hymn of inspiration, all four verses. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come to you this morning and we um, thank you that we're able-bodied enough to be here this morning and we thank you so much for all of those people that are joining us on our Facebook feed and, and thank you that we have the ability to reach out to folks like that. We just pray that all those folks that are out there will, will feel part of this that's happening this morning and will feel part of this body whether they can be here or not. We just thank you for um, this building. We thank you for all the activities that happen during this week, for children's voices being coming surgeries will go well, and we pray for strength for Booty. And we just lift up those that, um, that, pr that, that we know are dealing with health issues right now and just pray that you will be there with them and strengthen their bodies. And we pray, Lord, too, for the folks that are having a wilderness in addiction or depression, that you will just put somebody or something in their life that will help them just look to you. And we pray now the precious prayer that you gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Pam. We have a very, very special birthday today. And so I've gotten two different uh, ages, 28 and 29. So it's Carmen's birthday today. Y'all give Carmen a hand, right? 
And she's either 28 or 29. You want to lead me into it? Okay, here we go. Ready? One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy over her right now. Give her strength. Give her courage. Give her rest. Give her peace, Father. Thank you so much that she is your precious daughter, Lord. And all of God's people said, amen, amen. Thank you. I ask our ushers to come up as we take up our offering today. And so, guys, thank you the way we've given. got a lot of stuff coming up. We have another missions meeting for our family mission trip uh, to Tehachie in the summertime. That's tomorrow at lunch, and so we are pumped about that. We have Encounter coming up for our youth, and so they're going to be doing the whole Jesus weekend at the end of March here. We have our Easter programming coming up, and we have brunches and Easter egg hunts and, gosh, all of that. I mean, we just don't want to be just busy. We want to be about God's business, amen? And so what you put in this plate helps us be about God's business. What you give to us online helps us to be about the kingdom business uh, here. So, Lord, we ask that you bless all of this, God, uh, that, that is given today, Father. And, Father, every penny, every cent, Father, may it go into your kingdom work uh, in our world, Jesus. We love you. And all of God's people said, amen. As the plate's being pushed around a little bit, um, let me just uh, let me just accentuate our Lenten study on Wednesday night. Guys, I just am pumped about it and excited about it. And if you're not involved, the question is why. Y'all come up. You can join us online at 6 o'clock as well or come to the coffee bar. We've got great food, great fellowship. And, and you can already see the effect of we're all talking wilderness now. We're all talking all this kind of great stuff on the same page, you know, as far as what Jesus did for 40 days uh, between uh, his baptism and his ministry. And that's just where we land over the next few weeks uh, during Lent as well. So I want to encourage you uh, to come, participate. Uh, think of it as me plus one. Bring somebody as well. So I love you guys. I love you guys online as well. Amen. Amen to that, yeah. 
that that is uh we, we sometimes in ministry we don't get to see a lot of fruit right that is the fruit right there thank you so much tank that is the fruit right there of learning a very precious and beautiful song sheila thank you for sharing that with me and giving us permission to use it so that is completely awesome so uh y'all just let's just give that god a hand again on that it's just that's just great so we don't have a children's sermon today but you couldn't top that right there and so if y'all are ready uh to go with miss carmen to children's church then you're more than welcome to go hang out uh with her as well um identity belovedness and purpose is what we're about today and so let me invite you to stand as we read our scripture together found in luke chapter 4 uh And then what Dan observed was he shared with us that most of us prefer group one, right? Predictable and comfortable and peaceful and restful and sure. And when we think about how we want our lives to be, when we think about how we want our finances to be, when we think about how we really want our relationships around us to be, we tend to vote for group one. But here's the question for us, right? Um, where does growth happen? Where does the most amount of change happen in our lives? I'm going to leave that question with you, but we're in our Lenten series where we're on this journey with Jesus into the wild. We are going to learn from Jesus and learn of Jesus as we let him become more real and more alive in us each and every day as we journey towards Easter. So there's three truths that I want to talk to you this morning about the wild. And here's the first one. The wild is a universal human condition. The wild is a universal human condition. The wilderness, or the wild as we're calling it, is described in ancient Israel is the barren lands. The wild is the hot and sparsely populated territory. The wild is the seemingly infertile and desert-like land. But check this out. The Greek word for wilderness is eremos. And now this has a lot of different meanings and is used a lot of different times, especially uh, in, in, in relation with Jesus. Um, it can be translated as desert. It can be translated as a deserted place. It can be translated as a desolate place. It can be translated as a solitary place or a lonely place or one of my favorite translations a quiet place or the wilderness or the wild as we are calling it john the baptist guess what he lived and preached in the eremos jesus fed the multitudes in the eremos jesus was often trying to get away with his disciples to the eremos so that they could be alone and have time of retreat and renewal together luke 4:32 tells us this he says that you know at daybreak jesus went out to the airmost jesus went to a solitary place i don't know why the scripture up there i may have missed that one there but in the bible okay it tells us jesus went out to the airmost and went to a solitary place to pray we see that several different references with him but look instead of just talking about the wild i just thought wouldn't it be great if we could really get a good picture of the wilderness that Jesus entered into in Luke chapter 4. So here's a video right here of the Judean desert now that Jesus went into 2,000 years ago. That just gives us a great sense, right, 
of really what Jesus was going into. Now remember, Jesus is not a tourist passing through, and Jesus is not this modern-day observer taking a two-hour hike. Jesus is going into that wilderness that we just saw for 40 days. and that we didn't do and yet it landed us in the wild some of us are in the wild due to our own choices one decision here a yes when it should have been no there and bam now here you are in the wild some of us are in the wild because just as scripture taught us Jesus led us there you weren't comfortable with what he was leading you to do. Perhaps you had never done that before, but you were obedient and you went into the wild. You kept saying yes to God and you landed right in the middle of a wilderness. You know, the best advice that I ever got whenever I was just kind of reviving and coming back to life in Jesus was keep saying yes to God, Todd. Keep saying yes to God no matter what no matter where, no matter who, no matter when. Keep saying yes to God. And guess what? All those yeses did. They landed me right here. Amen? They landed me right here. My mother, <laughs> she was married for decades to someone dealing with uh, unconfessed addiction that was the wild. Mom understood what God understood. It was a place of great need she didn't choose that she didn't cause that and it was a place where finding help she found who had cancer she came from her room all all the way down to that chapel to pray she came to be with her father and she was uh, just uh, so precious to talk to. And so we prayed together, recognizing her mortality, guys, seeking and fighting for healing in the middle of the wild. She came putting her trust and putting her life in Jesus' hand. I wonder where you might be this morning. I wonder where you might be experiencing your great need or your great lacking or your great hurt today. I don't know what has put you in the wild, whether it be circumstances or your choices or if Jesus filled you with the Holy Spirit and led you there, but I do know this. chapter 3 there's his baptism right and right there at his baptism he is told this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased and so then the heavens open up right there and this dove comes down and the Holy Spirit descends upon Jesus right so there's the start right there and then we go from uh, uh, we go look all the way to Luke chapter uh, Luke chapter 4 uh, beginning in, I think, verse 14, we see Jesus start his earthly ministry right there. But that, 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 uh, that space right there between Luke chapter 3's baptism and Luke chapter 4, verse 14, uh, his uh, 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 launch into uh, ministry, there's this space right there that was Jesus being in the wild. And it's just interesting that that happens before the beginning of his ministry. You see, what happens in that wilderness, we're going to find out, is super critical to Jesus' normality that he had to go through. 
Was this a real temptation? Was it a real struggle for him? Was it a real challenge for Jesus? Or was he just going through the motions to show us something? Well, listen, here's what I believe. We surely believe that Jesus was fully God. But guess what we also believe? We also believe that he was fully human. We believe what it says in Philippians chapter 2 where it says, in your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, check this out, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death even death on a cross. Fully human Jesus, right? Fully human Jesus experienced profound vulnerability in the wild church family. Fully human Jesus had to face real temptation from a very, very evil one. Here's what Hebrews 4, 14 through 16 says. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weakness, but listen to this, but we have one who has been tempted, tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. In the wild, in the wilderness, in that face-to-face -face encounter with Satan, the great deceiver, the great accuser, Jesus has the ability. He has the choice, I want to tell you. He's completely and fully got the choice to sin or not to sin. His obedience, though, in the most difficult circumstances of his life, it's pivotal for us to understand that. It's mission critical for you and I to get that because that lends to the salvation of all humanity. Amen? Of all humanity, you know. And look, please don't miss these two details from the story. Who called Jesus to the wild? Luke 4, 1, again, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, lifted, left the Jordan and was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness. The Holy Spirit, God himself, called and led Jesus into that place of testing and challenge. And then the second part, how did Jesus enter the wilderness? How did Jesus exit the wilderness? Luke 4.1 tells us that he went in full of the Holy Spirit. And look at Luke 4.14 says this, Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread throughout the whole countryside. You see, there's this definite contrast going on here between Jesus' physical emptiness, right? Didn't eat for 40 days, you know, and his spiritual fullness. I mean, if you're looking at Jesus after 40 days of no food or water, if you're looking at him or smelling him, right, you know, after sleeping out in the dirt for 40 nights, if you're looking at him after no bubble baths for 40 days, right, you know, uh, he probably was looking a little worn and a little roughed up and a little scruffy and a little homeless and a little impoverished. And yet, in the midst of Jesus' drastic physical emptiness that he was going through, there is an absolute spiritual fullness that is completely present in his life. He came into the wild full of the Holy Spirit, and he came out of the wild full of the Holy Spirit. That contrasting reality between outward emptiness and inward fullness is what not only made all the difference for Jesus at that time, it is definitely what makes the potential and promise of making all the difference for us during our time as well. I don't know if y'all remember Wayne Watson, but I saw Wayne Watson whenever I was uh, maybe a seventh or eighth grader, and uh, uh, he may have come to our church. I don't remember, but anyway, Wayne sings this song, Some Days Drag. Some days fly, some days I think of the day I'll die. Do y'all remember that? Anybody? No? Okay. I guess you have to be from La Mesa to remember that, right? Some days fill me and some days drain, and one day Jesus will call my name. One day Jesus will call my name. 
As days go by, I hope I don't stay the same. I want to get so close to him that it's Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. That's Satan's purpose. That's his purpose in the wild. Guess what God is up to? He says it in John 10.10. 10. He says, at the end of that, I've come that you might have life and life abundantly. The Greek word for that is peresos. You know, it means life to the max, life to the full, life to the more life exceeding and beyond any expectation that we would ever have life that is more than enough for us life with purpose luke 19 10 you know the son of man has come to seek and to save the lost jesus wants to find us and meet us in the wild and save us and rescue us and give us his fullness where we only have emptiness i love the promise of the 23rd psalm found in verse 4 even though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil for you are with me for you are with me your rod and your staff they comfort me guys <laughs> the wild right i mean it's just a place of completely naked encounter with god and ourselves it is the place we never want to go we never want to go but we choose to go there or God leads us there or something places us there. And if the Spirit led us there, we, it just makes us where we are not just content to remain there plus the 40 days. He came out of the wild. And look, God can be encountered anywhere. Amen? God can be encountered at our schools. God can be encountered at our church. God can be encountered in the shower. God can be encountered on a long drive to Abilene. God can be encountered anywhere. The wild and its unruliness and its lack of clear promise with its sense of missed or averted destiny is a unique place, though, of encounter and formation for us as followers of Jesus. But it happens. And for many of us, I would say it has to happen. The Holy Spirit does this incredible work in us. Guess what? When things feel most precarious, when things are most unsafe, and when things are most unpredictable. For those of you in the wild this morning, and look, I don't know what put you there, you know. I don't know if it was your choices or circumstances or if God led you there, but I have no doubt that you are being challenged by the great deceiver this morning. I have no doubt that you're being challenged by him as you go and journey through that wilderness. And you know what the enemy is doing? He is challenging your identity, isn't he? He is in challenging who you are. You know what the enemy is doing? He is challenging your beloved. With you, I'm well pleased. That's our value. That's our sense of purpose to God before doing one single thing for him. There's a praise song that I can't remember the name of it, and I, I just, the lyrics are out of my head. I don't, I don't, I know I don't have it right, but it's over the last year. And I love it. And, and it says this. In the wild is where I lay it down. All my burdens and all my crowns. In the wild is where I surrender. Every lie and every doubt. I surrender. And here's what I love. And I will make room for you. I will make room for you. To do whatever you want to do. I will make room. Father, we're just in the wild, God. And we may have found ourselves listening to the wrong voices in our wilderness, Jesus. 
Father, maybe it's the wilderness of retirement. Maybe it's the wilderness of, of a family member. Maybe it's the wilderness of a situation or a circumstance or the, the wilderness of, of something that, that you have led us to, Father, in mission. And we're like, oh, I don't know, Jesus. Whatever it is, God, let us know that we belong to you. Let us know that our identity is found in you. Let us know that our belovedness, Father, of whose you are is found in you. And let us know that our purpose, God, of which is very much alive and very much real and very much just showered over us, God, our purpose is because of you. For what we are to do is because of you, God. We love you, Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Amen and amen. We have communion today, and I'm so excited about celebrating communion with you guys. And I just want to remind our online community, anything will work. I mean, so just in your pantry, if you have bread or you have chips or you have water or you have wine, you have real wine. We don't have real wine here, but you have real wine or whatever, you know, you can participate with us. But it's more than just joining us in it. This is communion as we are with brothers and sisters here and you're with brothers and sisters there. But it's communion with God. Amen. It's about being a part of him and him being a part of us. You're in the wild today. This is going to be probably the most precious and beautiful communion that you have ever experienced because it's exactly showing that no matter how we got there, Jesus pierces through all of the lies. And he pierces through all of the fog, and he hits and settles right in our heart, no matter the wild that you're in. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God. We confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. To your church, God. You delivered us from the slavery to sin and death, and you made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread and gave thanks to you, and he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the very mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Oh God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine and make them be for us the body and blood of you and for me was broken for us and what this represents to us is his incredible eternal healing for us in our lives and this wine the juice sorry this juice right represents the blood of Christ that was poured out for you and for me and this represents for us the incredible uh, awesome Forgiveness, grace, and mercy extended to us, spilled on that cross that covers not just some sins, not just the little sins, all sin. All sin. I don't know your wilderness, but I know the God that's going to meet you there. I know who's going to join you in that wilderness as well. I'll ask our praise team to come up, and we'll take communion together. Matt, do you mind helping again today? Thank you.
as we come to sing and let the praise team just lead us through, guys, we're not in a hurry, man. We're not rushed this morning. I know there are things in our hearts that we need to just we need to just let God be a part of, man. There are things in our life that that just they they just confuse us and 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 they uh, they get us going the wrong way sometimes. He, we just want him to be a part of those things. There's celebrations that are going on in our life for people that we know and love that are doing much better, and we just want him to be a part of that as well. So Matt will be here offering communion to you. Come as you feel that down the center aisles and then exit out there. If you want to take communion in your seat, Matt will also come get with you as soon as that happens as well. So come as you feel led today to accept his holy communion. My 
What a great day. What a great blessing. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing us so much today. Thank you guys for joining us online. Y'all remember our benediction as we say goodbye to each other. We did this for the whole uh, uh, fr front part of uh, 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 the, the last series that we were in. We're going to continue it through Lent. Uh, God loves you, right? And there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Let's say that again. God loves you, and there's absolutely nothing you can do. To go in his power. See you Wednesday.